Hi, I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer. And yeah, I can't take my smile off my face because I'm really excited. And if there, I know there's a heaven, okay? And here's what I know about heaven. It's going to be filled with stories like this one you're going to watch right now. Um, this is what I don't know. My wife was, I was telling Julianne just a second ago, my wife's going, God, you're so happy this week. And it's like, because I have some of the greatest shows happening this week with people that I really care about. And I love being able to bring this to you guys because, um, there's so much going on in the world and so much that's, uh, you know, tragic and so much that's non-relational. And I think what you're going to see here tonight is something that will just amaze you. And isn't it a good day when you can just be amazed? Um, before I bring my guest on, we are here because of the Coburg Road Car Wash. We can't do our shows without our sponsors. And Coburg Road is one of our best. And I'm gonna, I stopped by to see Renee. I wanna show you this little video because it's never a bad day for a car wash. Well, hello, Renee. You're sponsoring the show tonight, so I thought I'd get some video going through the car wash. Is that okay? Absolutely. And it's a great day for a car wash. I'm so glad you're here. It's never it's a bad day. Never a bad day for a car wash. That is right. As you can see, everyone's coming. Watch the show tonight. I will. What time? Five o'clock. Five o'clock, right. Yeah, we're going to have a heck of a time. I'm off here in a couple minutes. I will tune in at five o'clock. So welcome back. Yes, Coburg Road Car Wash. So go in, tell Renee, Jim, and the guys, um, hey, we saw this on Rick Dancer's show because they make this happen. So let's, um, we get our cars washed there. We love her. I know she's the best. Renee is awesome. All right, you guys. So this is what we've been waiting for. Um, I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is Julianne Mills. Say hi, Julie. Hello. So it is so great to see you. It is good to see you. So the other day, the reason I got this idea, I already had a story um, back in, I'm going to guess it was, I think it was 2009 because I yeah. lost the race for secretary of state. And then I, I met you. And um, so how I met Julianne Mills is an organization called Ride Able used to do horseback riding and teach people with different abilities um, how to ride a horse. And everyone from people with <clears throat> autism uh, to people who are disabled. And Julie, you, what is your disability? It is arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. The nervous system never connected properly, so the muscles never developed, and the joints locked into position. I have no use of my hands at all. I write with my teeth and limited use with my legs. So, and you were born, this has been for your entire life. Yes, born with it. They can, because of ultrasounds, they now can find it at 13 weeks. Can they fix it? Uh, no. <clears throat> but they no. know that you have it. But you can tell that you have it. And it's, think of an oak tree and there's all these different branches on it. Um, the branch that I'm on, the older you get, the stronger you get. And that's the branch I'm on. And that I've met people who have the same disability as me. And all four limbs are affected. All the joints are affected. Uh, but the older we get, the stronger we get. Now, if we get in an accident, then you're with everyone else that's on the tree, basically, where you get weaker instead. I met another person who was 21 and she could no longer walk. So the time they're 21, it just depended, depends on how it affects you. They have no idea what causes it. They have guesses, but no idea. And you have three children, one adopted and the other two are biological kids. Yes. And how old are they? Uh, my youngest is 21 and my son is 24 and my adopted daughter is 21 and a half. So Julie was riding on this horse and yes. you, you said to me that that horse Chica kind of changed your world. I 
I got stronger with her and I didn't think I could ever ride a horse again. The last time I rode a horse was when I was young and Chica just, she knew about disabilities. She was very gentle. I started to fall off one day and she threw her butt around under my butt. She just twisted her body and was able to catch me. So I didn't go anywhere off the horse. Um, so one of the time, my favorite was when we were going off the path and Right Abel hadn't mowed their lawn yet. And I'm like, what is that noise? And I remember Monica looking at me going, what noise? I said, it stopped. And so we started going again. And she goes, that's grass. And I'm like, grass crunches under your feet? I didn't know that it made sounds. Wow. And so, because I don't walk on grass. And with a wheelchair, it's just a wheelchair. I didn't know that it made noise. And it was the most exciting thing I could do. I got stronger riding that horse to the point that I got to go to the back area. And I remember having, there's a stream back there. Yeah. Chica kind of jumped over the stream and I was able to stay on the horse. It was amazing. So when Julie and I met then, and then she says to me, um, well, I paint and I'm thinking, you can't use your arms. How do you paint? And she goes, I paint with my teeth. And so that inspired this story. And then we'll kind of come back and you're going to show us how you do that. But that Perfect. moment inspired this. Everybody's called to do something and either you listen or you don't. Instructor, she just thought I had something. She loved how I painted with my teeth and she wanted to give me the gift. I look at the paper. And what should I draw on you today? I need total physical care. That's something I cannot do. I can't run, always wanted to run. I've gone skiing before and that's an experience. I could do anything I wanna do. If you put your mind to it, all great things can happen. I pray a lot during my paintings. And... What do you ask God? To bless this world. If the world was blessed, then everything else comes and falls in place. And I pray for my family. That's the kinds of things, and mostly peace. I was watching my daughter paint, dance, and she goes, I wish I could paint like you. And I said, well, I wish I could dance like you. And then it just hit me, painting is my way of dancing. It's part of my soul. When my boy was um, one years old, he was all over the place and I had to catch him and he weighed 60 pounds. After 60 pounds, I could no longer pick him up. When they first see me, they see a scrunched up little body. I'm only five feet tall. My arms don't work and most people are terrified of, to be around me. They're afraid that their kids are gonna get whatever I have. And then they watch me paint. the 60s and 70s, where mainstreaming consisted of you go to a school and there was a chain link fence, and that was considered mainstream. The disabled people were on one side, regulars were on the other side, and the two should never meet. Matter of fact, when I was younger, I didn't even believe in God. Most people, when they hit my age, are no longer walk walking and I'm determined to 
to make, break the rules. I like breaking rules. <laughs> I'll admit it, I like breaking rules. <laughs> I like not being part of the mold. I like being part of the something else, something bigger than life. And you are definitely something bigger than life. Well, thank you. When you watch that, what do you think? Like, wow. I saw my old dog in there and it was like, oh, my baby. Um, and I just look at my paintings then and I see my new stuff. And I just see the growth in who I am as a person, who I am in my paintings, and just feeling really happy and positive. So show people, can you, can we see if you do, if you paint, how you do this? Can I show you two paintings that got an award? Yeah. Right? Can you do that? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a second. Okay. I work for the Mouth and Foot Painting Artists, and that's where you can find my artwork also. Mouth and Foot Painting Artists. Okay. Associate, they're world, worldwide and they're in Lichtenstein. Oh. <gasps> Julianne, oh my God, that is so beautiful. That's Mount Pisgah. That's Mount Pisgah. Oh my God, you're so talented. And oh, this, yeah. When I went to Alaska. That is so pretty. That's so pretty, Julia. You you were. I mean, I thought you were great before, but you really, you really have. It looks more like the artist you were talking about earlier that you really like. What? It, look, it looks more like the artist that you've been talking about prior to the show that you and I were talking about. Yes. Yes. So you've yes. taken art. You've obviously taken art classes. This isn't something you. I mean, you you're gifted at it, but it's something you've perfected. Yeah, I went to Loyola Marymount, and I got degrees in art and education and uh, minors in mu music and psychology. So when you, in that story you were talking and you said when you were a kid, you were put off in other parts of the school so people didn't have to be around you. Right. How does that impact your life? What is that, how does that? Well, um, I was, you probably even remember um, Martin Luther King Jr., his dream. And I remember that. I was little when he had it, when I heard it. And I was determined to make the dream come true that we could go to any school, we could be participating, we could have conversations like this, we could get married, have children, and be a part of the society, not hidden away. And that was my goal in life is to just keep promoting that dream. And I, he's one of my heroes for his dream speech is the Martin Luther King. So his dream was your dream. Yes. That people wouldn't look at you. And you said something else there that I think is really profound is mm -hmm. people look at you and they think that they're afraid of you because they think they're going to get what you have. That's how people treated me in the past. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Have and you seen just I understand why though, too, on one level. Because I met someone when I was in the community college. I was 18 and I had never seen this disability. And I thought, well, how would I want people to ask me? So I just went up and asked her, What is your disability? Because I was curious. And and so she told me and it ended up good. So as an artist and someone who is with a different ability, um, does that, it makes it harder or do you don't, do you even realize there's a difference because this is how you've always done it? I have that question asked a lot, especially in college. And I said, and I, at first I thought, well, first you have to go through all the stages of grief. If, even if you're born with a disability, but this came easy to me. Art is in like the family tree. Um, I know nothing else besides using my teeth. I used to be able to lift 60 pounds with my teeth. Wow. And then when I was injured, 
it was like, there is a difference. The, you know, when you're born disabled, you have a choice to either figure it out and be a part of society or not. Um, but when you're injured, it's it's more of a shock because you lose that ability right. that you once had. Both still, both groups, I believe, still have to go through the grieving process. So but, when, so you were because you were in an accident, and we're not, we can't really talk about that. But you were in an accident, injured your back, and and so you, um, so you've had both, and it was a serious injury. Yes. So you've experienced what is a uh, more, I don't know, I don't want to say normal, but probably something yeah, that happens. Works. Yeah. So maybe a more normal way to get injured and, and see how people are. So you've lived both worlds and you were born that way. So let me ask you this, cause this is interesting to me. So did you have to grieve the being born with a disability? I did a little bit, you know, when you have all your siblings are running around, your cousins are all running around. Um, I always wanted to dance can't dance and that's when my daughter's like well you are on the paper and so that's where that came about because she's a dancer and um so there is grieving in some areas so do you where do you get how, how do you keep your attitude up i think like here's COVID, and i think a lot of people are struggling um because we have now been given a disability um you know what I mean? In a way, we can't go out. We are we are now refrained from doing what we used to do. Um, how do you smile? How do you? I mean, you're like one of the most inspirational kind. I mean, even when you smile, your cheeks get all you know everything like lines up here, and you're like, I think people. If somebody came on here, Brian just came on and said, Brian Riggs says Julianne is a definite its definition of inspiration. Thank um, you. How do you? inspire me what are you what do you get your hope how do you what don't you what don't you focus on what do you focus on i believe in god and i just know that there's something always better um i get depressed easily i get angry like anyone else but then when i have my after i have my temper tantrum um i'm like okay put on my big girl panties and how are we going to fix it? What can I do to make my life better? How can I, and if I can't fix the situation, I'm going to cheer up because I know that I know that I know that things are going to go well. And I paint and with my painting that really helps with my, um, my emotional state of mind. Also, I have a puppy. And that's really nice to be able to teach him to be my service dog. Because her dog <laughs> picks things up for her and gives them to her and, you know, and hands them to her, like to her mouth. I mean, and Onto puts them on the table. table. Yeah. Yeah. And what you need done. So she has mm -hmm. this dog. Um, Gina says, I'm an amputee. And the only time I miss my leg is when I want to walk on the beach. What is what in life makes you frustrated, Julie? not being able to drive a car and um because it's a beautiful day and it'd be nice to just go to the beach so that's frustrating not being able to drive having to depend on others um what's frustrating at the moment is finding someone who's a caregiver who can be helpful and no matter what our personalities are, but can actually be there for me. And so my kids don't have to take care of me all the time. Right. So those kind uh, of things. That, so personal care, I get depressed over that. Um, so somebody asked on here, Rick asked, um, Rick Curry, how much is one of your paintings? Um, well, it, it just varies. Like I have this small one and I'll show in a little bit. Um, but, well, do it. Show me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Show off your stuff, girl. So, plus I'll paint if you wish. There, can you see me well enough? So this okay. is my Robin. And uh, okay. Oh yes, that's beautiful. 
And so this, something like this, it's, I think it's like only eight by 10, eight by 12. And I would sell it probably for $150. Okay. And how do people find you, Julie? Um, um, is Facebook the best? Facebook. And then my website, which is www.juliannemills.com and my Gmail. And that is, uh, what is my Gmail? Julie Anns with an S. So it's J-U-L-I-E-A-N-N-S-A-R-T at gmail.com. Would you like me to paint while we yeah. talk? Yeah. Would you, yeah, you guys, this is the coolest thing. I mean, I think I can I could do that too, Julie, because there's nothing I can't do in talk. I can talk and do anything, anything. Yeah. Well, I you know love painting. She, oh, she just comes alive. It, when just, she this. it makes me so happy. It just makes my day, makes me um, just really good. And I got too much paint on. There we go. So, Julie, do you think maybe yeah. that you're like a conduit for God? Like, like he he puts these images into you so and 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 you're the only one that can get them out this way that he wants them to happen that way you know what i mean yes i i believe that could be a possibility yes i i want to be open to that aspect and i think it's just really important to be open because if we're open then good things will happen and come our way so when when did you start painting how old were you I was nine years old. How did your parents know this was going to be your thing? Who found that for you? Did you find that or did somebody say, um, Julie, try actually, painting? Actually, my mom said that um, she was just tired of my one sister and I hanging around the house doing nothing. And we were nine years old. It was summertime. And in California, that summer, it was really hot. It's like a hundred and it could be 107 in the shade. And so um, she's like, you need to go do something. So what she did was took us to the um, Cultural Arts Center. And I did artwork and my sister wanted to do ceramics. And the teacher who was the art professor um, teacher, she, she was, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? And talked to my mom and dad and said, she has talent like I haven't seen in a long time. I'd like to teach her. And that's how I started my art world. And then unfortunately she passed away from cancer, but I continued doing artwork and I'd like to think that maybe she's in heaven looking down going, I helped her. What would you tell her today? Thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for not being afraid of me. Um, just thank you. Because she took a nine-year-old girl and gave you a dream, didn't she? Yeah. And it... To me, keep it thing back. To me, what it did was it made an equal playing field. Um, it made the playing field even, and so people, when I start painting, they like, oh my gosh, I I want to know more about you, and it makes it really. It opens the door. It makes it causes a bridge. So I can talk and you can be whoever you want with me and I'll be whoever I want to be with you. It opens the door to so many things. The one thing you're right about COVID, I do miss uh, not being in the galleries anymore because I would paint there for like an, I could only sit for about an hour because of the back issue and I miss painting at the galleries right. and we have to wear masks. Well, I write with my teeth. I can't really wear a mask and write with my teeth. 
I tried it and it doesn't look too good that way. So what can we learn from your story in terms of how many people's lives could we change if we just helped them find their dream? Can you imagine what the world would be like if we could, in, instead of we see so much people picking on each other, instead finding the thing that makes them come alive and let them come alive? Um, I had this conversation with someone recently. I think if we only see our differences, that's all we're ever going to see in this world. Yeah. If we see beyond our differences, and don't worry about disability or religion or color or this or that. If we could see the person as a human being, because that's what I am. I'm a human being. Yeah. And there are so many people have, in my past that even when I was pregnant with my kiddos said, my kind shouldn't have children. And I'm a gosh darn good mom. You know, That's what the kids would probably tell you. And we just have to put our differences aside and ask questions nicely. You, you don't have to get so mean. I mean, I have my moments where I'm like a bull in a China store, but um, be respectful. And it's okay to come up to someone. Now, there are some people who you might say, oh, I know other disabled able people and you can't talk to them it's because probably they've been crushed so much that they don't know how to talk to someone who is just asking a simple question i've met quite a few people like that and they are so wrapped up inside themselves and so hurt that they're ready for a fight and maybe we all need to stop, take a breather and go, let's just get moving on and just respect each other. Let's let the love of the world and love of God um, emanate through us. When I paint, I just like bringing joy to people. It brings joy to me. And I just, I'm happy when I do it. it like I said, it's it does the barrier. It's a bridge. Do you think, in some ways, that you're um, you're helping God show off His creation? I hope so. That would be awesome. Isn't that kind of a fun way to look at it. Like, like He made it. He made you just like you are, and mm -hmm. you're not a mistake. You're not. Yeah. He didn't make a mistake. He made you just the way you are. Absolutely. I have a friend that I'm going to show his video sometime too. He's passed away now, but he was in a wheelchair. And Adam told me one time, I said, if you could go back, would you do this differently? He goes, I, would, I wouldn't trade my wheelchair or my disability for anything because this is who I am. This is all I know. And I can look at other people and say, oh, yes, I'd love to be able to do that. But he said, but I, 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 if, 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 he said, if, if this is how, if God created me like this, then this is what I'm going to be. And I'm going to live that. And I think that's what people, it's so hard for able-bodied people because we almost have it too easy, you know? Well, like, well, because of that accident with my back, it made me be more appreciative of my artwork because when I got injured, I couldn't draw anymore. I couldn't even write my name. And it's amazing when you lose something, how much you regret, there might be regret or whatever. I'm the type of person, it's like, mm, that's not an option. I am going to learn how to do this again. And it's, but I've always been that personality. If you say I can't crochet because you have to have two hands, um, I proved to my mom and my grandmother that's a bunch of baloney. You could, I can crochet. Do you uh, really? Oh uh, yeah, I can crochet. A uh, bit since the accident, I haven't crocheted. But um, I remember my grandmother sitting in front of the piano in our old house that we used to live in, and I was like 
nine. I think that's my magic number, I guess. And uh, I said, I couldn't do it. And I said, Grandma, I'm lefty because I do everything on the left side of my teeth. So if you want to ever, anybody out there, you want to try writing? If you're right-handed, put it in the right side of your teeth. If you're left-handed, put it on the left side of your teeth. And make sure the pencil's clean, though, or the pen, because it's really gross if you don't. Trust me on that one. <laughs> it tastes terrible. Um, but I did. She, she said, okay, give me an hour so I could try to learn how to do it left-handed. She did it left-handed. I looked at her. I said, you mean like this? And I just watched her, and I just whipped it out, the crocheting. Um, but I do everything left side. So and if I'm talking about the accident too much, just tell me no. But because this is a, just my thought is, so your your alleged disability is your normal life. That's the my normal life. The accident really made you disabled. Yes. And then now you're back to your able-bodied self. More, you know what see what I mean? Yes. More, Not I mean, as much as I used to. Tissues. Not as right. much, but. I've overcome a lot and it's because I made the choice. I made the choice to live and there's so much to live for. And the earth is so beautiful. There's so much I want to see, so much I want to do. And a little accident's not going to stop me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't think anything is going to stop you. So what do you, um, what do you hope uh, for the world? What do you hope? for people? Respect. Respect and kindness and love. And if we could just get past our differences, in my opinion, we'd have peace. So that's what I think. And when we look at people and they don't look like what we think, We need to talk to them, say That's hi, right. and strike up a conversation of anything. Hey, beautiful day outside. I've never seen your disability before. What is it? And there are some people who will handle it great. I'm one of those type of people. There will be other ones who are like um, stranger danger and just go, okay, and think. Say say a little prayer or say it send some positive energy their way. Right, and at least like I I felt that way the first time I um, saw a veteran and in a wheelchair, and and I wanted to say thank you for your service and I just felt kind of stupid. Why? You know, and then, I don't know. I just felt like I didn't know what to do, and so then I said thank you for your service and the look on that person's face. Now I can do it all the time because it was mm -hmm. like, it was a relief, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of work with people with different abilities. So I'm not afraid to ask them anything, you know, oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. I say to my friend, Amelia Abel, she, she experiences down syndrome. And I, I tell her, I don't see what other people see. And she goes, I said, what is down syndrome? She goes, look at my face. And I said, I don't see it because I, I know you too well, you know, mm -hmm. and I think, differences go away when we start seeing their heart and somebody just said on here I love Julie's smile love her smile so a smile can just take away the things that uh, on you that don't look uh, as normal as other things or when you walk or something can you still walk no not like I used to so you're not like you used person. to see me yeah I could maybe go with someone holding me I could go maybe six feet Jamie's so Jamie Zagar, your son has Down syndrome. He experiences Down syndrome. Um, I am, I'm excited for you. I think people who experience Down syndrome are some of the sweetest, kindest. They teach me so much, and I hope this isn't belittling anything. I that's not my intent. Um, but I kind of feel like um, they love everybody. You know. I mean, my friends with Down syndrome, they come up and hug you and there's no walls. That's what I love people with disabilities, with, you know, in the community. There's no walls. Rick, 
you know, when I had cancer, when I found out I had cancer, I was really scared. And I didn't see a lot of people for a while. And then I went to a thing with the Oregon Supported Living Program. And all these friends of mine with different abilities were there. And they all came up and started hugging me and crying. And, are you, and they said, are you going to die? What nobody oh. else would say, what other people wouldn't say, but were thinking they would mm-hmm. say. And it was so mm-hmm. releasing. It was like I cried. And then I went, no, but thank you because I need to talk about that. I need to tell you, no, I'm not going to die. You know, but it was like they were asking. Um, she says, he's a huge blessing, proud Downs mom. Oh my God. He's going to just make your world so wonderful. And, uh, you will always be loved, Jamie. Um, even when the rest of the world turns their back on you, um, my Amelia Abel would never turn her back on me ever. So Julie, um, I just love who you are and I love like what you stand for Mm -hmm. and I love your, what your paintings are doing. And Oh, guess what? The other thing I know about Julie is, so she wrote me, this is how we got reconnected because I figured out the Mustang was her, but she saw a picture I took of a daffodil in front of my house (laughs) about it. And she goes, Rick, can I paint that? And I said, Oh my gosh, yes. So I, um, and then I asked her, well, can I get a copy of it or something? She goes, no, I have to give you the original. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Because of the mountain foot painting artists, what they do since I were I get a stipend every month. And so it's that's how I live is off of their money and um paint. And if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do all this painting. And that's they're in right. Liechtenstein. Who's this group? Who is this now? It's the mouth and foot painting artist. And so because Association, yeah. So they fund, help fund your, you, and then you so, pay. Well, what it is, is it's, um, it's a group of, of people in Liechtenstein. This guy was paralyzed in 1940 and he, there was nothing wrong with his brain, but nobody wanted to hire him because he's in a wheelchair. So he started painting and he started this group and it's only for people who write with their teeth or write with their toes. And it's all, it's a nonprofit and they take your paintings. So if you get accepted, you turn in, you have to turn so many paintings in, in three years. So about 15 to 20 paintings. I try to do 20 uh, to get over the limit. Plus it gives more of a variety in my opinion, but this group, they make cards out of them, puzzles, uh, picture books, all kinds of neat stuff. They have a website and everything. I have never heard of anything so great. It's wonderful. So I that- tried so many years to get on it. And that's what else started my painting. It was before age nine. It was because I remember I was three years old. And when I was three, I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. Because if I wanted to go from room to room, my parents had to pick me up and put me there. Uh, and so that's why, where how I started, not being able to move around or anything, just just my head bobbled and my smile talking. Um, and I remember she got some cards in the mail and it was from the mouth and foot painting artist. And she goes, maybe you'll be able to do this someday. And here I am in 2006, they accepted my artwork and I've been painting for them ever since. So your mom spoke it into existence, didn't she? Oh yeah. And I and I'm the type of person who's like, if it, if there's a will, there's a way, and if there's a mountain in between us, I'm gonna go through the mountain. I'm just so, gonna make it happen. So when you were little, how did you get up? Did you learn to just rotate yourself up? Because you can't use your arms at all, right? No, uh, I couldn't walk either very well. I had a walker. So it's a stroller that grows with you. So the older you get and you're in case. So think of a baby stroller and they just get bigger and bigger as you get older. Well, you know what? That's why you're so moved around. That's why you're so wild. Why? I mean, you spent because you spent like three, four, five years looking around at all the things that were around you and the whole world and going, if I don't do something, 
I am not going to see the world. And so you got your ass, excuse my language, but you got your <laughs> ass up out of that thing and you started going and nobody's been able to catch up with you since. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. And I've been to, well, and also I like to travel too. And I think it's because my dad's from Oklahoma. And so we would drive from Anaheim, California to Oklahoma to the Panhandle um, like every year or every other year. And so we got to see a lot of uh, the U.S. And, and, and its beauty. Julianne Mills, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. And yeah. Renee and all the folks at the Cobra Road Car Wash, thanks for sponsoring our show. Um, Julie, you can go in on the comment section and put in more information about how people can get in touch with you or find your paintings. Um, you can do that yourself and just put it in there and they'll, they'll know and have, you go to your page and answer people's questions and stuff like that because they'd love to do that. Okay. Sounds great. All right. I will see great you later. Talking with you. you too, honey. Love you. Thanks. Take care. So, wow. That fun. That's Julianne Mills. Um, Kind of funny, my air conditioner just goes off right then. If that doesn't inspire you um, to go find the thing that makes you come alive and come alive, I don't know what will and what can. Um, you know, there's different reasons for things to happen in our world and how I ran into her um, one day near my house um, was a lucky break for me. Uh, you know, I think the nice thing, I, I don't, I, I think sometimes um, people think that um, they feel sorry for people like Julie. I, I never feel sorry for people like Julie. I feel like it's, almost proof. Um, of humanity that it is still there. It's just sometimes really hard to see in this day and age. So, so um, that's it for tonight. Um, I am going to, <clears throat> tomorrow night, we are going to be talking about redistricting the state of Oregon. And we'll have guests on tomorrow at five o'clock. This is a very important show, very important topic in our culture. Um, and then on Thursday night, uh, Donna Reem, uh, the lone survivor from a killing, a dairy mark killing in 1994 here in Eugene, um, is going to be joining us uh, to talk with us. The, the 27th anniversary of that is um, on Saturday. And so I contacted Donna. She's never really talked about it since this all happened. And she's going to join us on the show to talk with us. Julie, thank you so much for your time. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow night. Have a great night. If that doesn't make you feel better about life, I don't know what can. I can't help you. <laughs>